Uh, next, we're going to hear from uh, Adi Abulafia. Um, Dr. Abulafia is here for, for, with us today from Israel. He completed his anterior segment fellowship under Graham Barrett in Western Australia and has served as the director of the Iowa Calculation and Biometry Unit of the Intel Medical Center in Tel Aviv. And he's presently the director of the cataract services at the Sher Zedek uh, Medical Center in Jerusalem. Dr. Abulafi has been the author of, a, of four uh, Journal of Cataract Refractive Surgery editorials, numerous publications, and is really best known for his work in astigmatism analysis and the toric intraocular lens. He's also a member of the ASCRS IOL uh, Power Calculation Subcommittee, and he's going to speak to us today about posterior corneal astigmatism and the Abulafi Coke Hill RBF Artificial Intelligence Toric Calculator. Thank you, Adi. <laughs> Thank you so much, Warren. Um, so, uh, you are going to hear from uh, Warren and Helga all about the Hill RBF calculator and about its wonderful accuracy. But uh, one has to remember that many of our cataract patients will suffer from corneal astigmatism as well, which should ideally be treated with toric RLs at a time at cataract surgery. And uh, so, what is more obvious than to have a Hill RBF toric calculator? Um, well, toric calculators are considered to be uh, the, the, um, um, the choice for these patients. However, uh, resu the results following their implantations can be sometimes unpredictable, since corneal astigmatism measurements, the methods of calculation, surgically induced astigmatism, and toric misalignments are all factors that might contribute to unexpected residual astigmatism. And today I want to focus about uh, the methods of calculation. So it's been six years now since Dal Koch had reminded us the role of the posterior cornea in toracal calculations and that standard keratometry and topography machines tend to yield inaccurate results in assessing the net corneal astigmatic power. What they do, they measure the anterior cornea uh, and they uh, extrapolate the posterior cornea by using a fixed ratio which is not correct. So uh, Dr. Cope and his group evaluated the posterior cornea in a large group of patients using a dowel sham fluke device, and what they found out was that most of the posterior corneas were steep along the vertical meridian. Now, since the posterior cornea acts like a negative lens, it will actually create a net plus power along the horizontal meridian, inducing against the rule astigmatism. Another finding in the study was that in with the rule eyes, the more curvature in the front was correlated to more curvature in the back, whereas for against the rule eyes, uh, the uh, there was no correlation between the magnitude of the front and the magnitude of the back surfaces of the cornea. He also found that there was much individual variability exceeding at extremes over 0.5 diopters. So based on their findings, they developed the Baylor nomogram in order to address the posterior corneal astigmatism effect and since then, a great deal of work has been done in order to refine our understanding of the posterior cornea and to find more accurate measurements in how to uh, do our rhetoric calculation in our daily practice. So basically, two approaches have been taken. The first is the use of mathematical models, which actually takes uh, anterior corneal-based measurements and calculate a new estimated net corneal astigmatism, and the ultimate goal, direct measurements of the posterior cornea. And today I would like to focus on the abulafia coke formula. Uh, and this formula is based on a regression model and it was developed in order to compensate for the posterior corneal astigmatism effect. So what it does, it takes anterior cor uh, curvature-based corneal measurements and calculate a new total corneal astigmatism with a new magnitude and a new meridian. So let's see one example. If we take 1.5 at 100 degrees, it will transfer that into 0.92 at 105 degrees. So well, we published a paper about this formula like two years ago, and the purpose of it was uh, to compare the accuracy of two models of torical calculators with or without the adjustments of the abulafia coke formula, and to compare those results to the baritory calculator. So for developing uh, the formula, we used um, lens star measurements from the Eintal Eye Center from Tel Aviv, Israel, and for validating it, we use the OWL Master 500 measurements from the Lion Eye Institute in WA, Australia. And for the method of calculation, we compare the Alcon model, which, use, uh, which is the previous Alcon model, which uses a fixed ratio in order to calculate the estimated uh, tericity 
uh, at the corneal plane, uh, and the Holiday and the Baratory calculator, which used the effective lens position for the same purpose. Now, both the Alcon and the Holiday models were uh, um, evaluated with or without the adjustments of the Abulafia Coke formula. Uh, in order to exclude the influence of the SIA and torcal misalignment, we used post operative corneal measurements and the actual post-operative torical axis alignment. And bearing in mind that astigmatism is a vector, uh, the main idea was to try to figure out uh, the nature of the correlation between the X and Y components of the anterior curvature-based corneal measurements and the estimated net corneal astigmatism. And we, we did find a high correlation between the measurement corneal astigmatism by the lens star and the estimated corneal astigmatism uh, total corneal astigmatism, and although we tried many sophisticated uh, ways to uh, improve it, it seems like a simple linear regression did the best uh, for our data set. So then we needed to validate uh, the formula, and we, in order to calculate the errors in the predicted refractive astigmatism, um, we did uh, a vector analysis, and uh, what uh, the results are, uh, you can see it just here, the error in predicted residual astigmatism for both the calculators without any adjustments. Both of them had against real prediction errors with a center rate of more than 0.5 diopters. However, applying the regression formula shifted all these errors back to the center uh, with the center rate prediction errors which were close to zero. Now these results were uh, very similar to those of uh, the Barrett Tory calculator. Um, doesn't seem to move anymore. Then, can somebody help me with the slides? Maybe the battery is off. Yeah, now it's shifted along. Can you take it back, please? Way back, so, sorry for that. Ah. Oh. Uh, well, you saw everything now. I don't need to talk. <laughs> okay, so now we're all right. Okay, so uh, the results were similar to those of the Barrett uh, Tory calculator. So the conclusion of our study was that the prediction of the post operative astigmatic outcomes can be optimized by adjusting standard Tory calculators with the new formula. Now, just remember when using mathematical models, never use them together with total coronal astigmatism measurements because then you'll be correcting the same problem twice and you will get it wrong. Also, it is important to take care not to use the mathematical models with unusual corneas like keratoconus or post-refractive corneas because they were not designed to do so. Uh, so how does the new Hill rbf Tory calculator work? So for the spherical equivalent prediction, it uses the Hill rbf calculator. And for the torical cylinder power, the corneal plane, it's using the effective lens position. And for the total corneal astigmatism, it uses the Abulafia Coke formula. And I'm very happy that Hagstreit and Dr. Hill uh, chosen our formula for, uh, to be in the lens, on the lens star because this is one of my favorite devices to measure corneal astigmatism. And here I'm going to echo uh, uh, the two previous talks, because this, uh, the lens star is not just like a black box where you push buttons and get numbers. Uh, you can actually see the, uh, the measurements and you can go quickly through the measurements and then you can uh, delete the ones that you don't like and you get a new uh, K, sets of Ks with standard deviation both for the flat K and the steep K and also for the steep meridian, which is very reassuring. So let's go uh, quickly through uh, one calculations uh, together. So this is a 59-year-old female. She has cataract and with rule astigmatism. So the first thing I do, as you might, I'm looking at the mirrors and I see that they are okay. Then I'm making sure that we are dealing with a pretty regular and symmetrical astigmatism. And then it's advisable to follow Warren Hill's methodology and to use primary and secondary supporting instruments in order to determine the steep meridian and then you can do the same for the power difference between the meridians. And let's look at the different calculators here. So uh, if you look at the holiday calculator, you will probably pick a T5 or T6 for this patient. The Olson with the standard calculator T5, 
the heel RBF, you would probably pick a T4 and also uh, for the Barrett. And for the spherical equivalent, all of them agree that it should be 22.5. So this lady had an uh, uneventful cataract extraction with a T4 lens implantation. And um, the final axis, 93, just one degree off, depending on which calculator do you look at. Uh, Post-op refraction, plano, minus 0.25 at 5, so slightly um, with the rule, uh, residual astigmatism. And if you look at the error in the predicted refractive astigmatism, both the Holiday and the Olson calculators yielded uh, significant against the rule prediction errors, whereas using the Barrett and the Hill RBF toy calculator yielded prediction errors which were close to zero. Thank you. Thank you, Ari.